Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Source Podcast. I'm your host, Jace. This is a Spawn Daily episode, and uh, if you're not familiar with Spawn Daily, uh, let me tell you what it's all about. So starting back in 2022, which was the 30th anniversary of Spawn, uh, we thought, hey, we've never read all of Spawn, uh, kind of in the aftermath or, or maybe as a consequence of Spawn breaking the record for longest running independent title with issue 301, uh, 300 tied with Cerebus from Dave Sim, 301 broke the record. Todd decided to, to start expanding the Spawn line, so there were some other ancillary titles or, or titles that were adjacent to Spawn that were, that were added in, like King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, Scorched, and along with a regular Spawn title. And I picked up some of those books. I wanted to get on board. I was really excited for what Todd was saying about wanting to, to really start a, a more connected universe beyond just the Spawn book. But when I read them, I, I realized I, I didn't have a lot of context, right? Like I collected Spawn back in the day, I think till like issue 30, and I kind of fell off. And, you know, obviously it, it had run another 270 issues. I had always wanted to read it, never had. At various times, I would buy it three, four, five, six issues in a row, and then it would go in the box, and I, I would never go and read it. And so I, I thought, okay, 30th anniversary, all this Spawn stuff going on. Let's read the regular series. And let's talk about it. We'll put out an episode a day. And Rocky joined me, and it was a lot of fun. And a lot of the books held up, you know, for as much as Todd got a lot of flack back in the day for his writing skills. The books really held up. Uh, unfortunately, Rocky had to bow out. I got another partner in crime, uh, Blake Whitlow, who uh, that was the spawn reading order I was using. Uh, unfortunately, he had some personal stuff, and he had to drop out. And I tried to keep it going on my own, but, you know, it's much harder to get excited and doing it on your own and what have you. So it kind of fell off, and I, I was disappointed that it did. Uh, one of the things we discovered while uh, we were reading it, especially once I discovered uh, Blake's reading order, was that a lot of the other tie-in titles from various times, miniseries Cygor, Curse of Spawn, Sam and Twitch, even the Batman Spawn issues, a lot of those tie-ins had story beats, story uh, components that were actually really important. And so... Uh, I decided after issue 50 <clears throat> to go ahead and start putting in some of those crossovers, use Blake's reading order instead of just going, you know, one through whatever. Um, but now we're talking about expanding, right? Like we 365 days in the year. I think at that time there was going to be like 320 issues of uh, Spawn, the regular series. So we had plenty of time. Now you start adding, adding in the crossovers, you, you run out of time quickly, right? And I was trying to finish before the end of the year. But like I said, we fell off anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, so going forward, we're going to continue. I've been re-releasing all the old episodes, both on audio and on YouTube. Uh, keep in mind that whenever we review an issue of the regular series, the main Spawn series, it's going to be one issue per episode. But if we do the Sam and Twitch stuff or Curse of Spawn or any of the minis, we're going to consolidate those into one episode, uh, which we're doing that today with the fan edition. It's actually three issues. It'll all be in one episode. And that's just to keep it from taking forever, right? Uh, and a lot of these story arcs, they maybe don't require a full uh, episode to be devoted to them. So uh, that's what we're doing, really enjoying it. Obviously, 2024, there's even uh, more Spawn coming, if you will, um, w with 10 new series that are coming this year that were announced at, uh, at New York Comic Con last October. We were lucky enough to have Erica Schultz. She's the writer of Rat City, which is a Spawn ancillary series that's set in the future. She came on and talked about it. That was a lot of fun. So, yeah, really excited for the future of Spawn. Obviously, we had Todd on. I hope you guys all got a chance to see that episode uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about all the stuff that's coming up in 2024, hopefully uh, a date for the movie release uh, to be announced and some filming to start in 2024. We'll see. Uh, also, another Kickstarter for what Todd is calling his most detailed action figure ever. And obviously, if you know how detailed McFarland makes his toys, to say it's the most detailed ever, you know, that's really saying something. So he gave us a little sneak peek of that uh, as well, which is really cool. So uh, anyway, to the issue or issues at hand here, uh, as I mentioned, this fan edition, it's a very obscure series. I wasn't sure where to put it. I decided to put it here because we're about to talk about Medieval Spawn Witchblade, which is, there's two different minis. I think one is three issues, one is four. We're about to talk about those. 
Um, so it felt like a good place to put this because we're going to be talking about the Norse spawn, the Viking spawn uh, today. And uh, they're in these fan edition, these three issues. They're about 10 pages each, so not qu eight pages maybe, so not quite a full comic. And they're pretty obscure because they were packaged with the Overstreet fan magazine. You know, back in the early 90s, Wizard blew up, and it was a very popular magazine. And some other comic publishing entities, like uh, I think there was one done called Hero Illustrated. There was one done by Overstreet, you know, Overstreet Price Guide. Theirs was called Fan. And in order to entice people to pick it up, they were polybagged, and it came with these Spawn Fan Editions. So three months in a row, you got these Fan Edition uh, issues, and it told the story of uh, the North Spawn. So kind of obscure i found them on ebay uh got them relatively cheaply they're not expensive got it got them all in one lot but they're kind of hard to find digitally um i did scan them with my my copier i don't have like a professional scanner so apologies the quality is <laughs> not super great uh the story is okay uh but we'll get into it uh as we look at the first page here bo smith is the writer pencils by brad gorby inks by kevin conrad and art taber colors by tom kelly Letters by uh, Chris Iliopoulos. If you're wondering, Bo Smith, why does that sound familiar? Has he written comics before? Yeah. Okay, so Winona Earp is the property he's known for. Uh, this is before the Winona Earp and certainly before the television show. I think it, I want to say it was on USA Network. Uh, but, you know, big following, Western motif, and a little bit of that will show up here. Uh, but if you're wondering uh, why that name sounds familiar, yeah, that's where you may know uh, Bo Smith from. So, uh, as we start off here, Malbolgia is actually narrating the story. Fantastic splash page from Gorby here. Spawn with all his capes and spikes and chains. And uh, uh, he's kind of on this magnet that he, at a junkyard where you would smash cars up and just kind of a cool pose. And Malbolgia is talking about um, Spawn and, and you know what his expectations are and how he... Um, he wants Spawn to lead his armies of hell, and, and that's what his purpose is. And as we get a little further in the story here, we see Mal Bolger is actually talking to somebody. He's talking to the Violator's brother. He's talking to, uh, what is he called, the Vandalizer is his name. And he's saying, um, you know, your brother, the Violator, he hasn't been doing a good job of preparing Spawn to lead my armies. He needs a few more hoops to jump through, a little more trial by fire. We need to get him that edge. We need uh, to make sure that he's ready to, to lead my armies to victory. Um, and the Vandalizer, who, who looks so much different than Violator, right? Like Violator, he's kind of a puppet master. He kind of likes to manipulate a little more of a, almost like a horror movie villain where the Vandalizer is just brute force, right? Like you see it in this splat, kind of a splash panel here where he's, uh, he's saying, uh, just put him in front of me. I'll crush him. You know, I'll do whatever you want. I can't wait. And uh, Mal Bolger decides to tell uh, the Vandalizer the story of the first ever uh, Norse spawn, Hell Spawn. So we get this fantastic splash page of this uh, this new character, this, this Hell Spawn, uh, whose name is Nordic, the Norse Hell Spawn. And so uh, we see him there. One of the things that I noticed right away, Brad Gorby, he he did he did the McFarland thing, right? Very McFarland, where the face is all in shadow and all you do is see the eyes glowing. But he looks fantastic. He's got a battle axe. He's got a couple wolves there. He just looks great. Um, and, and yeah, I, I I just love the way he looks. So we are told by Malbolgia, uh, as he's telling the story, that this guy, this Nordic. His name was Nordic even before he came to Hellspawn, just spelled differently. But he was evil through and through, even before um, Malbolgia recruited him. So we see him, you know, once he's turned into a Hellspawn, we see him go and attack this village. Uh, and Malbolgia is talking about uh, just how evil and how um, formidable he was. He was pure evil. There was a beauty in that. Uh, his soul was black. And he had a couple of companions, uh, a couple of you know demon-ish wolves that he got from hell, Demas and Darkus, and the demons, along with Hellspawn, uh, this Hellspawn Nordic himself, would would feast on their kills, and then leave the rest to burn. So you see him attacking this village, and uh, as the the issue comes to a close, again they're relatively short. We see everything's burning behind him, 
and uh, he was driven by fire, the fires of hell, and it was just beautiful. And um, the Mal Bolgia said he, he was like this even before I recruited him. That was what was so fantastic. This is what I want Al Simmons to be. You know, can you help me out? Basically, uh, is is or not? Can you help me out? He's, he's ordering the the uh, the vandalizer. This is what this is what you need to do. This is where you need to get Al Simmons to be. So pretty interesting. Um, there's also in the back a little Q and A with Bo Smith. It does give some context of the story. Not 100% necessary, but it does give some context to the story about how he got involved in the project and and what have you. So. Uh, obviously, you're more than welcome to check that out if you like. We get to the second issue here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the cover. It's it's kind of dark, kind of hard to see. It just looks like some blobs here. You know, part of it, probably my scanner is not picking up the the dark colors um, as well. But see the creative team here again. It's Bo Smith writing the story. This time we've got uh, well, still Brad Gorby on pencils, but this time we have Chance Wolf handling the inks. Um, Daniel Blue. Stone painted the cover over pencils by Gorby and then colors by Tom Kelly, letters by Chris Iliopoulos. So one of the things, as we get into the second issue here, one of the things I did notice about this three-issue series from uh, Bo Smith is very much follows that three-act structure, right, of a typical uh, story that you're going to tell, and, and very different. Even though these are relatively short stories, they obviously all go together to tell one longer story, but they're all also very much their own thing like the first one is an introduction and, and we're introduced to Nordic and we get some fantastic uh, splash pages the second one here we're gonna focus on the the protagonist of the story the hero of the story if you will and then the third one is kind of the, uh, the resolution we get introduced to another new character so so pretty interesting they do feel very separate but obviously uh, you know some of the same characters and uh, well all the same characters really um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting the way they feel compartmentalized. Like, you could read them on their own, and while it's not the complete story, it, it does feel somewhat satisfying. Um, but they obviously, you know, uh, join together to tell a, a larger narrative to here. So in the second issue, we get a chance to see. We saw Mal Bolgia at the end of the story, last issue, say, yeah, the great thing. Uh, he's talking to the va vandalizer. The great thing uh, about Nordic is this is how he was before I even recruited him. Uh, and so we're going to get how he was recruited here in this issue. And we see he's a he's a Viking. He's out there raping and pillaging and murdering and doing whatever. And we see he has the battle axe and he's, uh, you know, on his ship and he's just doing his Viking stuff. He, just pure, pure evil. Right. Which is so interesting because, he, you know, he carries that over when he becomes a Hellspawn. Just because you're Hellspawn doesn't mean you're going to be evil. And so I, I do kind of like that Bo Smith brings that in, right? Because it does bring some context. We know Al Simmons struggles with his morality, but generally tries to do the right thing. That's part of the reason that he left his job. He left his, uh, you know, black bag job, uh, covert ops, because some of the things he was doing he felt were morally questionable. Uh, and so he carried that over as Spawn. He tries to do the right thing. Obviously, there's a lot of trauma he's going through and, and all that, but he tries to do the right thing. Even though it's the powers of hell, uh, so it, it you know it goes to show it's like uh, just because you got your powers from hell doesn't mean you're necessarily a bad guy. If you were a bad guy before, you're still going to be a bad guy. But if you're not a bad guy, then maybe you don't have to be a bad guy just because you become a hell spawn. I, I do like that aspect of it, uh, that aspect of spawn, that aspect of the story, and it you know it's kind of reinforced here with uh, with Nordic. So uh, we're introduced to uh, the protagonist, new character, as I, I mentioned kind of the hero of the story, McFallon, the Dragon Master. Um, we're not, it's never really explained what his motivation is, why he's a hero. We're just told that he is. He's a slayer of dragons, perfect, uh, protector of the defenseless, liquidator of evil, and today he has come for Nordic. He's heard about this Nordic guy. You know, we saw on the first page there he was attacking this village, and McFallon is there to, uh, to take him out once and for all. And so they have this epic battle, right? And what's interesting, I found this line from Bo Smith to be a little awkward, and it made me, it took me out of the story a little bit. It made me stop and think. And he says there's such a, a fine line between good and evil. Uh, and I was like, wait, is there? I mean, good and evil, they're all the exact opposite. Is it really that close? But then, you know, I got back in the story, started reading a little more, and I think what Bo Smith is getting at, so McFallon is a warrior. 
right? And he lives by the sword as well. He's out there killing, but he's killing. It's all about the motivation. What are your reasons behind the killing? Uh, as opposed to Nordic, where he's doing it for selfish reasons and for his own sadistic pleasure or what have you. McFallon only kills when he's forced to, to, to protect others. So I think that's what Bo Smith is getting at. It, it's like what's in your heart. That's what makes the difference between a hero and a villain. And I suppose that's true when you start talking about, you know, what drives you, what, what are your values, what are your morals, um, and, and that separates the good from the bad. I mean, it's one of those things, like I've, I've heard people say, there's no such thing as a bad person. There's just people that do bad things. I, you know, I don't know if I buy that necessarily, but I, I get the concept, right? Like, even good people can do bad things, and even bad people can do good things. Um, but who you are at the core is what really matters, and that's what both Smith is getting at here, I, I guess. So, kind of interesting, but it does feel a little bit awkward. But anyway, as they go on and... and this page, it's, it's kind of crowded. There's a lot of dialogue on it. You can see I had to redact a lot of stuff. And the other thing is the dialogue, uh, even in the, on the printed page, is kind of hard to read. They chose to use uh, black word bubbles with, like, this yellow uh, inked font in it. And it made it hard to read. Like, even certainly when it's scanned, it's hard to read. And obviously this is redacted or whatever. But even when I was reading it on, the, on my hard copy, it, it's hard to read sometimes. kind of bleeds the black bleeds through, maybe not the best choice. And, and, you know, it is true. You can see in the scans here, this is 1996, very much at the beginning of the um, computerized coloring process. So the colors look a little wonky, and, you know, there was an adjustment period for sure. And so, yeah, the, the quality of the colors is not the, the best. Uh, but anyway, uh, they try to make this page feel very epic, but there's a lot of action to cover, and if it ends up feeling a little bit busy in my mind, but uh, we're told by Malbolgia that this fight went from minutes to hours to days. It was a truly epic battle between Nordic uh, in his human form before he gained the powers, powers of the Hellspawn and, and McFallon. But ultimately, McFallon was able to vanquish him. <clears throat> we see it on this uh, one-page splash here where he stabs him through the chest and wins the day but malbolgia is not going to let such a fantastic soldier fa fantastic potential soldier general for his army go to waste right so he was watching the battle i'm sure he kind of had his eye on nordic anyway because nordic was somebody who did such unspeakable horrible things um malbolgia probably was keeping an eye on him because he's feeding malbolgia's army by killing by being a horrible person, um, just doing horrible stuff. Until so Malbolja had his eye on him. When he dies, he grabs him. He grabs his soul. He brings him down into hell and you know makes him an offer. Hey, I'm going to give you the powers of uh, a hell spawn, the powers of hell, uh, and you're going to get to go back and get your revenge. And again, a bit of a flowery language here from Bo Smith, but uh, you see in the final panel there that Nordic is being... Uh, transformed by the Hellspawn power. So we get another double page uh, or a single page splash here like we did in the first issue seeing the Norse Hellspawn for the first time with his battle axe he's on this demonic horse that's got smoke coming out of its nostrils and very powerful image here and um, five years go by. Five years go by after the transformation the villagers have lived in peace all this time and they sense something is wrong and what they sense is the return of Nordic and McFallon is close by having a picnic with a nice young woman and senses the return of evil as well and that's how the second issue ends with McFallon going to the village uh, that he had saved previously and finding it in flames uh, Nordic has returned and, and obviously you see the look of surprise on McFallon's face like he stabbed this guy <clears throat> ran him through with his sword how could he have returned? Uh, not a great situation at all. <laughs> so, uh, so issue three. Here we go. Fantastic cover. Uh, Nordic with all his muscles and whatever. Um, looks like before he transformed uh, on the cover. Credits here. We have Bo Smith again, the writer. Brad Gorby handling the pencils. Chance Wolf on inks. David Bluestein paints the cover. Tom Kelly on colors and Chris Iliopoulos. 
uh, handles the uh, lettering. So third issue starts off, we're in heaven. Uh, we see the angels look very similar to what Angela looks like, what Tiffany looks like. And uh, they're kind of talking about, some of these angels are talking about who the most powerful is. Some are saying, ah, it's Angela. Some are saying it's Tiffany and say, no, it's actually a third angel we haven't heard of before. She's the toughest. She's the one when you really want something accomplished, you send her in and her name is Mercy. Uh, and what's interesting about Mercy, you know, I mentioned Bo Smith, uh, known for Winona Earp, Western Motif or what have you. Obviously, Mercy, you know, watching this on YouTube, you're going to be able to see right away. She's in this Native American garb. She's buff, too. Like, she's, she, I mean, it's good girl art. She's got, like, this Native American, uh, I don't even know what you call it, like, top on that covers her breasts. And then she's got a uh, very Angela-looking belt, very angel-like belt. Uh, but then some Native American boots. She's got like, sort of the headdress and what have you. I won't pretend to know politically if this is okay or not. Uh, I mean, it's portraying the, this woman as a powerful um, character, but I, I, I don't know. The, she's wearing very few clothes as well, so, which m most of the angels do. So I, I don't know. I, I'll leave that part alone. But she does look badass, uh, and we're told her name is Mercy. And like I said, when the time comes, you need somebody to take care of something, uh, and all else fails, you don't send Angela, you don't send Tiffany, you send Mercy. So, uh, meanwhile, back on Earth, um, Nordic has uh, defeated McFallon, or at least captured him and tied him up. And uh, he's gloating, basically. He's like, yeah, you know, he's finally got his revenge. And um, McFallon's like, hey, I'm, I'm not defeated. I'm going to find a way to, to you know, get out of this. I'm going to cut out your heart. And uh, Nordic gets a big kick out of that. He's like, I don't even have a heart anymore. Um, and so just as uh, Nordic is about to finish the deal and uh, finish off McFallon, Mercy shows up, starts shooting him with arrows, and um, Nordic's pretty surprised, right? Uh, there's some back and forth. There's some banter. And... Mal Again, Malbolge is relaying these events to uh, the Vandalizer. These, these things happened in the past. And he, he worries. He's like, oh, my God, uh, my forces have dealt with Mercy before, and the results haven't been pleasing. She's very formidable, and I hadn't planned on Nordic having such a, a tough test so early on. And so it, there's a, kind of a back-and-forth battle. They're punching each other. They're kicking each other. Um, Nordic six is wolves. Uh, wolves on um, Mercy, and she's able to kind of defeat them. But while all this is going on, it allows uh, Mick Fallon to, to get loose, right, and to pick up his sword. And we see on um, the next page, after he gets loose, that he's able to uh, kind of stab Nordic in the back. Uh, he runs his sword all the way through him, actually, and pretty happy about that uh, and, and says to Mercy, let me finish him. And uh, Nordic's kind of grabbing the sword as it's coming out of the front of his chest. It's actually a pretty brutal-looking uh, panel. Um, and Mercy's like, no, that, that won't finish him. The only way to finish him is I have to cut off his head and take it with me. Uh, and, and she says, go to hell, demon. And again, as Malbolja is the one narrating this, he tells Vandalizer, you know, I had plans for Nordic. I had to intervene. Uh, he came to hell. Just like Mercy wanted him, but maybe not the way that she wanted him. I grabbed him. I brought him to hell so I could use him later. <laughs> and um, at when that happens, when he disappears, McFallon's a little surprised. Mercy less so. Uh, he says, yeah, slither back to your master. She knows that she didn't get the better of him. She knows that he escaped. Uh, but McFallon, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know about heaven and hell and the battle between the two. And he's like, is he gone for good? Mercy's like, probably not. He'll probably be back. Uh, but your life's changed forever. You've been marked by hell. And she touches him and blesses him and says that he has a pure heart of a warrior. And she gives him three spirits, she says. I give you three life spirits. I guess that means he's going to be reborn a couple times. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but she uh, says, yeah, you have the heart of a warrior. And uh, beware hell of hell because they've marked you now. And, you know, be safe and what have you. And she kind of disappears, goes back to heaven 
wherever she goes, you know, when she has time off. And Malbolgia, as he's finishing relating the story to vandalizers, saying, so we don't want this to happen again. Um, you know, this was a mistake. You know, I uh, invested all these resources in it, uh, who I thought was going to be a great general, but he was tested too soon, you know, got the attention of Mercy. Mercy came and defeated him. And Vandalizer says, well, what's the deal? Where, where did he go? What what happened to him? And Malbolger tells him, well, his final chapter is uh, yet to be written. He's still around. I can call on him when I want. Now, I don't know if between when this came out in 1996 and now, you know, uh, now what will be 17 years later? No, longer than that. 20... 30, 26 years later, I think, uh, if I'm doing my math right, 27 years later. Uh, I don't know if he's shown up in the meantime uh, or not. So I guess as we're going through this Bond Daily, we'll find out together. Uh, but he is still around. Apparently, Malbolja can still call on him. But this is just an example uh, that Malbolja wants to give the vandalizer. Hey, I don't want these kind of mistakes made. I need you to go and... Um, and, you know, I've invested so much in Al Simmons, just like I invested in Nordic. It didn't work out with Nordic. I don't want it to fail with Al Simmons. Vandalizer, please go and do your best to, um, you know, to make him uh, into the general that I need him to be. So, again, kind of a short story, but a fun story. Uh, I think mostly where it shines is in the visuals. The visuals are really strong by Brad Gorby. I think they're just uh, fantastic. We get Several t uh, times it's a splash page where it's just beautiful. Um, it looks amazing, whether it's uh, McFallon or it's Mercy or it's Nordic. They all look fantastic. And it's a lot of fun. Is the language a little bit of its time? Yes. Is it a little paint by the numbers? Yes. But is it fun? Yes. It's, it's very fun. Adding to the mythos of Spawn. Yeah, it's a little awkward at times with the whole... Um, good and evil, fine line between. But I get what Bo Smith was trying to say. Uh, and I, I don't know. I just thought Mercy looked really fantastic. And uh, as I said, a lot of fun. I, I know a lot of people haven't read it, haven't seen it, maybe not even aware that it exists. But it's a good story. It's fun, like I said. And it, it fits in with a lot of the themes that are coming out of Spawn, especially with these other series that are coming out, how um, there's been so many different Hell Spawns through the years back in the past and into the future, like Rat City, like I was saying earlier. Uh, and it helps lead into um, the books that we're going to talk about next, which I mentioned it before, uh, Medieval Spawn Witchblade. Uh, that's the series. Uh, there's two of them. One of them is three issues. One of them is four issues. So those will be uh, coming out over the next couple of days. And then we'll get into some um, Spawn Wildcat stuff. So uh, again, appreciate everybody joining me as always. If you're checking us out on YouTube and you don't subscribe to the audio only YouTube channel, I do encourage you to go to wherever you get your podcast, uh, your favorite podcasting app or platform. Do a search for the comic source and subscribe. Um, there's thousands of episodes you can go back and listen to if you haven't heard them before. Uh, reviews and convention coverage and uh, interviews with different creators. Uh, Going forward, most likely almost all the content that we're doing is going to be on the YouTube channel as well as audio only. Uh, but there may be times where things only show up on the audio channel. Um, but again, I encourage you to go and subscribe to the audio channel. And also, while you're here checking us out on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, ring the notification bell, leave some comments below. Love to interact with people, hear why, uh, what they're enjoying about Spawn, and uh, the, you know, gives me a reason to do this that I know there are people that are watching uh, every day. So, uh, again, appreciate the support. And uh, if you're listening audio only and you're curious to see the art, definitely go over check us out on YouTube. Um, just do a search for The Comic Source. You'll find us. Or do a search for Spawn Daily. Uh, you can find us that way as well. Because there is other content on the channel uh, also, like uh, not just the Spawn interviews, but uh, like recently I did an interview with Natalie Maines. Uh, from CW played the dreamer and she's writing some dreamer comics for DC uh, as well. So that uh, episode is up there also. So again, we appreciate the support. Uh, don't forget to head down to the show notes if you're looking for where to find us on social media and that's going to do it for this episode. We appreciate you joining us as always, and we will talk to you next time.